advantages of Collier on bankruptcy is its long history, uh, which provides both continuity and depth. Um, Collier on bankruptcy 14th edition started with the enactment of the Chandler Act in 1938 uh, and grew from there. Uh, obviously, the original Collier started with the uh, Bankruptcy Act of 1898, then the 14th edition in 1938. The 15th edition was started with the major changes to bankruptcy law that were made by the Bankruptcy Code enactment in 1978. And the 16th edition started with the major changes that were made in um, 2005 with the Bankruptcy Abuse Prevention, Prevention and Consumer Protection Act. Uh, and each of those editions has built on and continued from the prior editions, which gives tremendous depth to the analysis and scope of what Call Your On Bankruptcy covers. It all, there's also uh, continuity. Uh, when I was in law school, my bankruptcy class was taught by the then editor in chief of the 14th edition, J.W. Moore. Um, after uh, he retired, the 15th edition was edited, was ed editor in chief was uh, Professor Larry King of NYU Law School. Professor King was actively engaged in helping to write the 78 code. Uh, which I was also engaged in. So I worked closely with him then and in the following years. Um, and after uh, his untimely passing, um, and I became the co-editor in chief with Henry Summer, um, where I've been for the last um, half dozen or seven or eight years, uh, it creates a continuity uh, reaching for me personally all the way back to 1938 through Professor King and through Professor Moore, uh, who were the my predecessors as editors in chief of, of this fine publication. Well, I think Collier has been the most authoritative secondary source on bankruptcy, probably since it was first published in 1898. Uh, there literally has been, it literally has been cited thousands of times by courts, including the Supreme Court on many occasions. Uh, and really, that's the result of the distinguished authors that we have writing for Collier and uh, who really give us the benefit of their deep knowledge of bankruptcy law. Well, there are a few things that are that are sort of developing. Uh, uh, we've started to see a number of bankruptcies involving crypto currencies and uh, auxiliary entities like that. Uh, so that, that's one thing that's starting to, to uh, be more prevalent. Uh, there's been a lot of controversy about something called the Texas Two-Step, where uh, firms have attempted to basically uh, offload their liabilities to subsidiaries and, uh, or to new firms and have those firms file bankruptcy. And that's very much up in the air whether that's a, a valid strategy. Uh, Subchapter 5 of Chapter 11, which involves small businesses, has really uh, developed, especially since Congress recently increased the amount of debt that those businesses can have and still be eligible for Subchapter 5. And in that regard, Tom Small, Judge Tom Small, who was one of the authors of Subchapter 5, has long been an author for Collier and writes, has written sections of Collier on that cover subchapter 5 of chapter 11. Uh, in the student loan area, the Department of Justice and the Department of Education have recently come out with a, a new guidance, uh, which we think will liberalize the discharge of student loans in bankruptcy. And again, one of our editorial board members, John Rayo, has been in the midst of those developments. He is at the National Consumer Law Center, and they've worked closely with a number of consumer advocates and the Department of Education and Department of Justice to develop that guidance. Uh, of course, there always are amendments to the bankruptcy rules. Uh, the reporter for the Bankruptcy Rules Committee, Elizabeth Gibson, is on our editorial board also, as are many past and present members of the Bankruptcy Rules Committee that makes the rules. Uh, my former Editor, co-editor in chief, the late Alan Resnick, was a reporter for the Bankruptcy Rules Committee. So that is uh, 
something that's always developing. And finally, there is a new director of the United States trustee program, which is part of the Department of Justice. And she is also, her name is Tara Toomey, and she has also written for Collier Publications. And we expect that uh, and hope that there will be some significant changes to that program, especially to make it more, uh, more friendly and more able to facilitate uh, the purposes of bankruptcy, giving a fresh start to consumer debtors. So there, there is plenty going on. To me, it's always been a great honor to, to write for Collier. I first was asked to contribute 40 years ago when I was a somewhat younger lawyer than I am now. Uh, but I also recognize that writing for Collier and especially being a co-editor in chief is a great responsibility kind of uh, to continue the stewardship of this, what's really become an institution in bankruptcy law. And, uh, you know, we take that seriously. Fortunately, we have great people who are uh, authors for us, who are on our editorial board, uh, who are the staff that we deal with at, at Lexis. And uh, so it's really a pleasure to continue to, to work with all of them and to really help develop the law into something that is hopefully a cohesive body of law that makes sense and that will accomplish its goals of giving a fresh start to individuals in financial trouble and to allow companies to reorganize and you know save jobs and help their communities and and maximize uh, the value that they can provide to our economy so you know, that's all a part of bankruptcy law. Collier is, I think, a mainstay of bankruptcy law, and, uh, and I'm just very proud to be a part of it. Well, awesome. you know, as we always do, we will be uh, updating it. There have been several Supreme Court cases, uh, two, of, uh, two of which have been decided this year, and one of which will be decided by June on some significant issues, and we get those into the treatise quite promptly. Uh, and beyond that, I think we're going to just keep the, keep doing what we have been doing for the last 125 years and try to prevent a source, to, to present a source that uh, people can rely on and go to and know that they are getting uh, good information and authoritative information about bankruptcy law. Well.